What's up, Ghost Squad? Famox here from Game on Your Face, and this is the last of our mid-range reviews. After this one, we're going to start taking a look at the higher-end players. But uh, let's get right into this one. Gustav Nyquist versus Marion Gabrick. Here's the rules. I will play both players for 7 games on 100 chemistry lines. They will not be assigned any boosts or captaincy cards. The overall grade is based on 5 stats, puck skills, skating, shooting, physical, and defensive. His current average price is 40 k putting him in the same price range as Monaghan and Gabrick. Puck skills, he gets a 9. Nyquist has dazzling hands. They're not as quick as someone like Duchesne, but they're pretty close. He's got great puck control and he would have no problem going coast to coast while dodging the opponent's team. Even if the puck got poked, he would often get it back on his stick and recover. He also had above average passing. It's not on McKinnon level, but he could sauce it through a stick or two before getting intercepted. Skating. He gets a 7.5. Nyquist skating is at 90, but I would say he skates closer to 88. And that's just because of his speed. Even when he starts his shift, he doesn't fly like other 90s such as Hagelin or even Cogliano. He's still fast, but not elite fast. That being said, he has great agility. Combine that with his stellar hands and he makes for a very effective player in tight situations. Shooting. He gets an 8.5. Nyquist has an outstanding wrist shot. He can get it off quick and has true sniper accuracy. He's near Phil Kessel status when it comes to picking corners. That being said, he's not perfect and will occasionally miss the net when he gets tired. Also, his slap shot is not the most dangerous, so I would suggest sticking to the wristers. Physical. He gets a 6.5. This is the weakest part of Nyquist's game. He's a very fragile player, and the slightest collision will knock him over. If he didn't manage to avoid a hit, he would most likely take a spill on the ice. There's no power through option with Goose. He was also horrible at making hits. He would act as a speed bump for opposing players, slowing them down, but not stopping them. Defensive. He gets a 7. Nyquist didn't stand out defensively, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. He can play his part in the defensive zone and not be a liability to the team. He makes good clean poke checks and avoids penalties, and can intercept the puck if he's in perfect position. But I wouldn't say it's his highest selling point. Not outstanding, but not bad either. Total points. In 7 games, he got 4 goals and 2 assists for a total of 6 points. His overall grade comes to 7.7 .7 out of 10, or 77%. Overall, Nyquist is a fantastic offensive player. He has a great shot, amazing hands, and a decent skating ability. And with his mid-range price of 50k, you get a good bang for your buck. Definitely one of the best cheap-ish players I've played this year. His only real downfall is his physicality, but that goes for most small forwards. But before you go spending your coins on him, let's see how he compares to his opponent, Marion Gabrick. His current average price is 40k, putting him in the same price range as Kessler and Nyquist. Puck skills. He gets an 8.5. Gabrick's hands are not as fast as Nyquist, but they're still effective. He can pull off most dekes just at a slower speed. He also had great control and could hold onto the puck even when getting poked. However, if you get too ambitious with your dekes, he'll eventually fumble it. His passing, on the other hand, is actually better than Nyquist. I would say it's the best part of his puck skills. You can make passes that you would expect from the elite playmakers and got the same amount of assists as goals. Skating. He got a 7.5. Gabrick's skating is exactly the same as Nyquist. He doesn't explode the way you would expect and doesn't hold up to his speedy reputation. He's still fast and created gold with his speed, he's just not 90 fast, and it takes a while for him to accelerate. But just like Goose, he does have good agility. Shooting. He gets an 8. When Gabby's wrist shot is hot, there's not much that can stop him. If there's a hole, he'll make sure it goes through. He plays like the elite sniper you remember him to be from NHL 14. However, he seems to only be on top of his game half the time. The other half, he struggles to hit the net. I found that most problems come when he shoots mid-stride or right after a deke. He also wasn't very effective with his slap shot, even on one-timers. Physical. He gets a 7. Gabrick is about 20 pounds heavier than Nyquist, and I actually felt that difference in the game. He's still on the weaker side, but his balance was definitely better. He shrugged off more hits and managed to stay on his feet when getting bumped along the boards. But as I said, he still isn't a tank player and would go down if he got lined up. Defensive. He gets a 6.5. Gabrick's defensive ability is not on par with Nyquist, 
His poke was okay on the forecheck, but I found that his stick lift wasn't very effective. Even with good position and optimal timing, he would rarely connect. His discipline was also a problem, and he got two penalties in his seven games. Total points. In seven games, he got four goals and four assists for a total of eight points. His overall grade comes to 7.5 out of 10, or 75%. Gabrick has definitely come down since his card last year, but he still plays pretty well in certain situations. His shot is fire when he's on his game, and his speed is better than most players. He also has a surprisingly good passing ability. However, he's pretty inconsistent. Some games, it's just like the old Gabrick is back, and then others, he feels like an 84. Most of the time, he will play quite similar to Nyquist, but Goose is just more well-rounded. There are less holes in his game, and he's definitely more consistent in his performance. So for that reason, I have to give the victory to Nyquist. But uh, let's see what you guys think with the community review. So for Nyquist's side, this is the first review where you, we were 5 points apart. You guys gave him a 7.2, and I gave him a 7.7. .7. And for Gabrick, you gave another 7.2, whereas I gave a 7.5. You can see the stats on the side of the screen now, and you'll notice that the area we disagreed on was physical and defensive, uh, where you guys gave all 6s. So if you're trying to decide between one of these two, it's definitely a tough choice. I say Gustav takes it, but the audience says it's even. And just for your own reference, there were 30 people that reviewed Nyquist and 21 people that reviewed Gabrick, if that makes any difference to you. So I hope this video helped you out a bit. If you enjoyed it, you can see my other ones on huthead.com along with their team builder forums and player database. Also, if you're one of my patrons, don't forget to pick who I review in the next video. Ex in the exclusive review vote. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then click the link in the description to my page on Patreon to see the other cool perks you get for becoming a patron. That's all for this one, boys. Don't forget to subscribe to Game On Your Face, where I provide in-depth reviews so you can make informed decisions. I'm Famox, and I'll see you in the next one.